Now today I'm going to develop some C41 films using the Fuji Honda Express um, kit, uh, C41 kit, and I'm going to go through every single step of it. Uh, I did it last time, uh, it's not my first time, I did film my first time but it was up in my room and everything just felt awkward. So I'm going to do it here where I have a sink nearby and also you know, lots of space for you know, the film developing itself. So, I'm going to do C41, I'm going to, I'm wondering whether to do, I think first I'm going to do <laughs> the 35mm um, in you know, one of the tanks and then if they come out good, I will do the second. I'm still kind of like, you know, working towards it. I don't want to do it all at once and make a mistake and lose the whole lot, you know. It'd be like a nightmare for me. Anyway, so, one film here is from 15 years back. I already did one last time. And this one here is one which I recently did with my Kanika. So, let's begin here. I will go and bring my chemicals. Okay, so here I have the chemicals. Now these uh, chemical bottles, if you want to know how, how I mixed these um, solutions, then do check out my video. I will link it in the description below or in the letter I here. <laughs> I never know where to freaking point. Now first things first, I'm gonna fill this with water and plug the heater in. The heater is like, as I said last time, it's, it's okay, but it's okay to maintain it kind of, but and it's not as powerful as I hoped. I thought it was gonna do the job, but it doesn't really do much. I think it's really for small tanks. First things first, I'm gonna fill this with water. Make sure it's hot. Make sure it's hot water. If you want to do that, I'll fill the kettle up and get some stuff to boil. Now first of all about the Fujihan processing kit, the manual you know leaves a lot to be desired. First of all, why the frick is it stapled right at the bottom here? What's up with you now? So even Neelix is complaining. <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> it's just like photocopied and I mean, yeah, fine print, but it's more than the fine print. It's it reads like I don't know, it reminds me of do you know the electrical component data sheets? It's like what you have to do is it's got a lot of technical information. What you have to do is extract that and make sense of it. Extract each bit and then you know make sense of it. So you know for somebody who's beginning or doing C41 for the first time, like myself, you know it's not really the best. But I have to say that um, somebody called Kevin Allen has actually um, you know made <laughs> some comprehensive instructions on his blog. Um, I will link that in the description below. So while this uh, chemistry is heating up and I'm waiting for it to reach 38 degrees, I'm going to show you how I actually get the film on the spirals and also, you know, retrieve the film and so forth with the stuff which you have to do incomplete, you know, pitch black. So what I tend to do is just do it in a changing bag. Okay, so first of all, retrieving a film. And if you have like film canisters like these, I mean, some people do this with a can opener, or pliers, or whatever. Some people use their freaking teeth. I don't, I don't know what people do. Well, I guess you cannot use your teeth inside a changing bag. <laughs> but, you know, there's different ways people do it. Um, I prefer using a film extractor, and there's a reason why. Because I don't have the heart to throw these film canisters away. I know, call me weird. I've accepted that. What's with you, eh? Come on. What? Freaking, what do you want now? Now, I like to use film retriever to get this out. And there's a reason why I do this the fancy way. Uh, this is because I cannot bear to, you know, throw away these film canisters. I don't know, there's something about them. Call me weird. I've already accepted that I am, so, <laughs> you know. Just got these things here. What you're supposed to do is slot them inside the film. The opening of the film. And once they're completely in there, like this, and you can see it completely flush against that, then 
the first slider you push in and then you turn the film until you hear a click. There we go. There's a click there. Then you put the second you push the second one here and then you pull both of them out and then you have your film retrieved here. Obviously don't pull it out too much or else you will you know, expose your shots. I think I retrieved it a bit too well. So let's pull it in a bit. Let's do the same with this one. There we go. Push the second slider in, and then pull them both out. Then you have your film. Right, so in your dark bag, what you need to put is your films, a pair of scissors, be careful, two spots. Sick. Scared me. <laughs> it's reluctant. <laughs> hmm. Two spirals, or however many films you have, and your Patterson tank, as well as the light seal funnel at the top. That's all you need in your dark bag. And of course, don't forget the center part here. <laughs> that is very important. Okay, I'll show you how, you, how to do it. Not with these films, because obviously I'll freaking expose the freak out of them. But I'll show you with some example films which have been damaged in some way or other. <laughs> oh my god, Neelix! He's got into the dark bag! <laughs> there is a cat inside my dark bag! That, okay, so you're gonna be kicked off. Yeah, you're gonna be kicked off at some point. <laughs> I love this guy. Actually, before you put your films in there, I'll do this now. Do you know this uh, little lip here? This short lip. Just snip that off and make it straight. This will help you inside there. That with this film. I will show you with some used film here. Because here you have your spiral, you see your bell bearing there. The opening here, you know, you can like slot the film, slide the film inside there. Now all you do is just like get your film, and this is of course all in the dark, all in the dark bag. You get your film and you slide it. Oops. You get your film, you slide it inside here. Past the ball bearings. Can't get it past. Can't push it past the ball bearings and pull it until it gets all the way to here. And then all you do here is just, you know, this motion. You can see it climbing upwards. And that. It'll, that is winding your film into a spiral. There we go. Now the film's all wound up into a spiral. And exactly the same thing with the other one. First of all, you do, you put your film inside the center shoot. That's one done. Yeah. And then, of course, the second film. You do the same. This mouth bit here. That's the full bearings further along and then you can see it's all spiraled in. There we go and then you put this onto the second one like this and then open your tank again all this is happening inside the dark bag and you put this along with the center rod center rod is very important this into the bottom then put your the moment you put this here turn it here that click secure on now it's safe to bring it out into the light so you just bring that into the light and then you're ready for your 
processing and putting chemicals in here and so forth. So now I'm gonna do it the hard way and Neelix needs to give up his brand new cushion, which I'm gonna be using. <laughs> right, so dark bag, what I tend to do is I got this really crappy old tripod in here. And the reason why is because I just like to because the, the freaking roof of it keeps collapsing on top of when I'm trying to wind the film on. And it's just so annoying. I started yelling at one point because it just kept unraveling my film from the spiral again. So what I tend to do is I just need to just put this in here so that it just holds the top part up. And then, yeah. So, so what I need to put in here are the spirals. My films. And the scissors. Those are, the scissors are for, um, you know when you've got the last bit of the film and you pull it from the canister, just slice the end part, just the very end, you know, centimeter of the end part, just to make it easier. And then the tank itself, as well as the light seal panel. First seal, second seal. One out. Oops, sorry. Got one spiral out. Okay, got it past the ball bearing. Pulled it past there. It's the first one. Okay, reach the end of the foam. Pull it out the canister. And then got this jaggedy bit at the end, which you want to cut off using the scissors. Careful with the scissors in here, you don't want to cut the freaking film. Okay, so dark back step done. Let's see here. Okay, let's take the tank out now that it's done. Both films are in here, secure. This was the end piece which I chopped off. Um, and the other end piece I could not pull out, so I just chopped it off right at the edge there. I got more cans. <laughs> I'm gonna be one of those where, uh, you know, when I'm like an old woman, I'll open the cupboard doors and like freaking loads of 35 mil candles just like fall out and 120 reels plastic ones. <laughs> Actually, I'll put this down so Neelix can lay on it again. Yeah, you can sit on it. Alright, so we have the tank and we have the chemistry here at 35 degrees. Not good enough. Give it this water heat up a bit. And I'm gonna give the tank the film a bit of a pre-wash. Yeah. And heat all the water out of it. Just what I tend to do is just put it in the in the tank here. I see the lid. Then put it on here. Once bring the lid on, just. See, it's gonna be buoyant because it's just air inside there only. You have to say this heater is good, kind of good at maintaining, but getting the temperature up to 38 is a bit of a thing. Okay, gloves on because these chemicals are very toxic. Okay, so the developer is finally at 38 degrees. So let's get the tank here, which has been washed and preheated here. Now then, the developer has to be 38 degrees constantly for about 3 minutes 15 seconds of, you know, in there. Uh, it just has to be 38 degrees. But these solutions, the um, a bleach fixer and stabilizer, um, they have to be around between 24 to 41. So they all have to be 38, only the developer. So, you know, that gives some leeway. It's just the vital temperature is the developer. So that is, yeah, that is definitely 38. So let's get the timer out here. Power this in here. Let's press start. 
Sure. Starts immediately. Start using the agitation stick. Just twiddle it. And that's how I'm gonna agitate it. So initially for 30 seconds, and then for five seconds every 30 seconds, if you know what I mean. So every 30 seconds, so leave it standing, and every 30 seconds agitate it for five seconds. Play something, this initial three minutes goes so quick. Time, okay. It's 3 minutes 15, so let's actually give yourself like about 5 to 10 seconds. Take the developer out because before you're putting the bleach in here, it's still developing as we speak. So the bleach, I know that's 24 at least. So you gotta put the bleach solution in here. Stop it from the bottom. My bleach solution stays in there for 5 minutes 30 seconds. So, okay, so agitate this a little bit like that. Then what I'm going to do is. What's up here? My goodness, I fed you, watered you, everything. What's up? Just wanting freaking attention. Me, that's what I mean. <laughs> okay, you know what? Let's put this back in here because who knows, I may want to do more films if this comes out. Right. Tap it at the bottom to get rid of the bubbles at the bottom. back in. Solutions, prepare the extra solution. So that's gonna be next for about six minutes and thirty seconds. After we have emptied this. Set this to six minutes and thirty. films. There's another wash. I'm gonna have to color coat these caps actually. 
um, at the top here because I don't want any uh, cross contamination with them, so I'm gonna mark them actually. So we'll do that tonight. Okay, it's gonna scream at me in a minute. Behold. Now it's a little pinkish. And you give it a wash. for about a couple of minutes. So now we put the stabilizer in. That is for, as I said, 1 minute 30 seconds. In actual fact, your film is now light safe. You can, like, you know, take it out and look at it. But let's just do the stabilizer first. Let's wash that funnel. Stabilizer ready. So we can put it back in there. Okay, stabilizer out now. After this is the exciting yet nerve-wracking bun. You see it's just like pinkish again. My important thing, right? Now something a little important, do not wash it after the stabilizer. Leave the stabilizer on there because it has a wetting agent. So move these big bugles out. Oh boy, these bottles. Yes, I'm delaying it because I'm a little nervous, so I'm hoping my film comes out. It turns out good. Moment of truth. Yes. Oh my god. It worked. <gasps> oh, what's that? What is that? Oh, it's the, oh my god, I can see them. That's from the that's from the um the Kanika, the Kanika SLR that I have. Uh, I'm gonna keep this in here, I'll tell you why, because before I take them upstairs to dry, I'm gonna keep them in the spirals. Okay, this one seems a bit dark, why? Oh, whoa, okay. What is the phone call? Oh my god! It worked and it worked perfectly. Okay, I'm gonna do more films. I'm gonna do the 120s, now that I've got a bit more. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go upstairs and hang these to dry. And then I'll start with more. Okay, so this is the place where I hang my films. This is my shower cubicle. That's the problem when you need the film photography. It takes over your bathroom. <laughs> so you have to kind of like... Ooh, Neelix photographs! We gotta put these. Oh my goodness, it's so nice to see it. It's like an amazing feeling. Seeing... I'll do the spiral so I don't crease it. Make sure it doesn't slip through my fingers. <laughs> I've grabbed it. I've grabbed it by the, the end of the film. Uh, oh. So, so on the bottom of it here, put a weighted clip. Make sure it's not on the frame. And then, let it hang so it dries nice and straight, so it doesn't curl or anything like this. I can't even remember some of these shots. This is the one. Um, I took 15 years ago and just probably forgot about it. I don't even know exactly what's on there. So, just the beauty's dry in here. Well, I'm gonna do some 120 films downstairs. Now, this time I'm gonna use a larger tank because the larger tank can take two 120 millimeter films or two medium format films. And the spirals, what you do here, you see the ball bearing here and you see the in, per, in thing. You know, when you go like this, you just push it further and then it comes out, but you notch it on the third. Click it on the third one, now it's the size of a medium format. So we have here a medium format, 120 Fuji color. So we also have one of those Lomography films, which I, you know, I was uh, curious about. I got one of them, which I'm going to process along with that. So, put them in there. See 
seal number one and seal number two. about these because these are the really nice Mamiya shots which I've taken and I'm just really trying that it all comes close okay. Okay. I'm down Images and I can see good ones. Yes! <laughs> Look, good images. Nice ones. Oh. Neelix, the star. I love that dude. So there you go. Color film. And I'm having a blast doing this. Loving this. And I'm gonna hang these up to dry upstairs. And yeah, clean up and then have a nice tea because I really need one right now after all this. I'm exhausted, but I'm so fulfilled. Yes! <laughs> and these are the medium format ones, which I think are they come out amazing. Of course, Neelix. This is, as you can see there, it's the Pro 400 H ones. Here's a look on this. Wow, the detail. It's moments like this when this thing comes in really handy. So cute. <laughs> Let's put the loop here. It's the Amiga 500 and the action replay on top of it. Basically, my retro setup. It's a beautiful loop. At the moment, I've only got um, negative sleeves that hold. Um, strips of five images. Um, th that's the problem. I, to be honest, I prefer doing uh, strips of six. Uh, so you know, I'm gonna have to get order more that have that hold strips of six. But these only hold uh, strips of five. So you know, I mean, the only downside to this is that you have to give up one photograph because one photograph is. I mean, normally the the one right at the beginning or right at the end is the one which you know. I, 
it's a scrap photograph. But um, if you don't have a scrap one, then of course, you know, it's a bit annoying. But I'm gonna get some six holders. But for now, oh, this is fine. Oh, I cannot wait to scan these. <laughs> I wanna see what these are like. I would like to say a big thank you to all my patrons for all their support, especially to my top tier patrons. Electronscape, Axel Dominator, Rich Garboot, Camel Tech, Stephen Leary, and Chris Sabalensky. Your support makes a huge difference and means a lot. <laughs>